Welcome to Ait Ben Hadou, one of Morocco's most iconic landmarks. A fortified Berber village built only from mud and straw, clay and wood. This wonderfully preserved kazaa sits high on a hillside along an ancient caravan route between Marrakesh and the Sahara Desert. But these days, Ait Ben Hadou is probably more recognisable as a Hollywood backdrop than a historic trading post. So the question is, has it become more of a movie set than a piece of Moroccan history? We're Chris and Lydia. Join us as we find out for ourselves. We travel to Ait Ben Hadou along the famous Road of a Thousand Kasbahs from the Dadas Valley, passing countless ancient mud brick kasbahs along the way. There's plenty of accommodation options in the area, and while you could always stay at a luxury hotel in the city of Wazazat, just 30 kilometers down the road, for a more authentic experience, we highly recommend spending the night close to Ait Ben Hadou in one of those historic kasbahs. We did, and it turned out to be one of the most unique accommodations we've ever stayed in. This is our accommodation for the night. Toilet. Another toilet downstairs. Oh wow! And this is our terrace. It's only oh. for you. All wow! For you. you you put that if you don't cross. Look at this. This is all. This is our private. And uh, after at the end of the day, you could take good photo. Oh, yes. yes. In the morning also when you wake up, and if you want to stay all together a little bit. Uh, <laughs> in the end of the day, in the evening, nice. to see the stars here, yeah, it's okay. Oh, nice. Good place. Beautiful. Voilà, très bien. Oh, merci <laughs> beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Wow. Look at the views of the pool, views of the mountain, Very authentic. views of the old Kasbah. 
Look at the big bird's nest, did you see? Oh, on top of the, the tower. So I asked her how they came about living in Morocco because they're from France and she yes. owned a restaurant for 50 years in France with her husband's a chef, so we get good food, French food tonight. And they used to come work really eight months really hard through the year and they'd come here for a holiday. So they used to just own this for their own holiday house and come here for four months of the year. And then in 2002, they sold their business and they moved here permanently and they set it up as a business. And back then they didn't have any um, electricity, running water, roads, but she said they still had plenty of people come to visit because it's so authentic. It's in the Berber traditional housing. She said, you can't build like this anymore. So, and this particular apartment is um, as traditional as you can get. You just won't get this sort of accommodation. Um, and where we won the lottery, it was out of three people in our group and we chose the lucky number nine. So it's a big apartment and it's just the really authentic traditional accommodation. So we'll show you through and if you want to come here, we will put the link below and um, you can choose number nine and this is what you'll get. On our way back down the stairs, we discovered another little cosy bedroom tucked away. But with the day moving along, there wasn't much time to settle in. Before long, it was time to head out to see 8 Ben Howdo, the main reason we've come here. Eight Ben Hadu is a wonderful example of an ancient Khazar, a traditional fortified village made of earthen buildings and surrounded by defensive walls and towers. These villages were often located along caravan trade routes built to protect their inhabitants and their goods. Caravans would stop here to rest, trade goods and stock up for their long journeys. This is Eight Ben Hadu. The scene of many a, a Hollywood movie, and you can see why. <laughs> Just look at this. Hollywood discovered this incredible place decades ago. From epic films like Lawrence of Arabia and Gladiator, to TV shows like Game of Thrones, these theatrical clay buildings and casbars have served as the perfect setting for Hollywood's vision of an ancient exotic world. The historic part of Ape Ben Hadu is located on the north side of the Unila River. To cross, we walked across the riverbed. There's also a modern bridge that was built in 2011. Before the bridge, when the river was full, you'd have to cross by donkey if you didn't want to get your feet wet. The main gate here was actually just built as a prop for the Gladiator movie, but it's been used in an Indiana Jones movie, uh, Game of Thrones, but it's only a recent edition. <laughs> they just haven't taken it down. We entered the village from the east, passing by gardens full of crops and artists and craftsmen selling their wares. And so you just get a bit of your water uh, and green tea and then not many people actually live in the crumbling clay kazaar these days. Most live in the village on the south side of the river, but still rely heavily on tourism for their livelihood. Oh, it's sugar. Mm, caramelized sugar. Oh, yeah, it smells good. <laughs> Cream caramel. It does smell oh, good. Oh, voila, that's awesome. It's like crepe brulee. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so. Earlier, we visited a carpet shop in the village that was part of a women's cooperative. These co-ops play a vital role in empowering local women, providing them with opportunities to earn a living and gain financial independence. We've made an effort to support them whenever we can during our time in Morocco. like this one, 8,200 dirham. So this is a women's cooperative where they make the rugs here, the Berber rugs, and there's 200 women here and 85% of the profits go back to the women. Most nice. of them work from home, so yeah, they've got a few women here that are showing us how it's done. But yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm.
As we made our way up to the village, we passed by the square where the arena for the Gladiator movies was built. References to the film industry are everywhere, which isn't surprising since Hollywood has become a key part of 8 Ben Hardu's identity and a major drawcard for tourists. Hollywood fame has shone a spotlight on this ancient kazaar, drawing in tourists, which benefits the local economy and indirectly helps preserve Ait Ben Hadou. So if you're looking for a scarf or a rug or a Moroccan souvenir, then you won't be disappointed. Sunset is one of the best times to visit 8 Ben Hadou, after the day trippers from Marrakesh have left and the setting sun casts long shadows over the landscape below. The old fortified granary at the peak of the village offers incredible views that haven't changed in centuries. It gives you a sense of the Khazar's strategic importance and it's also the perfect spot to admire the sunset. Well, the sun's set and the wind has picked up. It's going to blow us back down the mountain. Apparently this is the shortcut down. Despite its popularity as a film location, Eight Ben Hadou wasn't built for Hollywood. It stood here for centuries, long before the cameras arrived. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, with roots that trace back to the 11th century. Any renovations made to Eight Ben Hadou must use traditional building methods and materials to maintain the authentic character of the Khazar and ensure it remains a true representation of Berber architecture and heritage. While films have undoubtedly brought global attention to 8 Ben Hadou, they certainly haven't erased its past. It's been inspiring to walk through these streets and imagine the bustling life that once filled the alleyways, leaving us with a sense of awe. For us, 8 Ben Hadou embodies both history and cinema, a unique space where the two worlds coexist. Back in our Kasbah accommodation, our wonderful hosts, Michel and Colette, prepared a gourmet meal for us, which we enjoyed in their jazz-inspired dining area. It was our first turkey tagine of the trip, and it was amazing. Thanks for watching today, and please subscribe, as we'd love for you to join our roving community. Let us know in the comments what you think of 8 Ban Hadou. Do you think it's become too Hollywood, or does its history still shine through? And if you've been there yourself, did you go for the history or the film sets, or both? So now we're heading on out. Next stop, Marrakesh.